Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Doing something a little bit different. I'm taking a technique that Evan Abrams created and showed in a couple of tutorials. You want to check those out. But I'm doing a little bit of a different spin on it. So in a recent video by Evan Abrams, he showed these little flying blobby things. And the way he did it was basically kind of frame by frame um, animating this and, and adjusting the mask every frame or every few frames to try to match up to the path. And it's it's a decent it's a decent way of doing things and it's pretty fast. But if you know me, I like to make things a little bit more dynamic so it kind of automatically does these movements for you. So that's what I want to show you today. But definitely go check out Evan's tutorials. There's links in the descriptions um, where you can go check them out and see what he did. Um, there's pros and cons to both methods. His is a lot more uh, customizable, and you'd be able to get the exact look you want. Um, the way I'm doing it here, it just kind of does what it does. And so, say for instance, at this point right here, if I wanted this to be a little bit longer, or you know, kind of adjust the way this blobby looks, you don't really have that luxury with this. But it is a lot easier. It's very automatic. All right, so let's get started with a brand new composition. Let's call this blobbies, and let's bring up a background color. We'll do this same color of blue. And first we need to just create a circle, a shape layer. So I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. Make sure I don't have any of the layers down here selected because if I do, then it creates a mask and I don't want that. I want a shape. So I'm going to just create a circle. And let's go into the contents, into the transform. Right there where it says position, I'm just going to zero that out. Make sure it's right in the center. Now let's create a motion path for this. And I'm just going to select this background layer um, so that it's it's going to create a mask. And I'm going to use my pen tool. And I'm just going to create a nice movement. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. All right, and I'm not going to close it off because if I close it off, then it turns it into a mask and I don't want to do that. I just want to have this open. So then what I need to do is come down into the mask. This is kind of a cool trick. If I highlight the mask path, even though there's no keyframes or anything, I can hit copy. So command C, then go to my position here and command V will paste it. And it pastes all of that mask as a motion path. So pretty cool. So if I maybe want to make it a little bit faster, I can do that. Uh, maybe you take this last one, let's turn it into Easy Ease. You can just go down to Keyframe Assistant, hit Easy Ease or F9. Let's take a look, see how this looks. Just mess around with the graphs a little bit. And so with this look, the faster it is going, the longer the tail is going to be. So keep that in mind as you are messing around with the animations and getting the kind of the, the movement you want. All right, that's pretty cool. So now let's start adding the effects to create this tail. First thing we're going to want to do is go to Effect, Time, Echo, then Effect, Blur, CC Radial Blur. Then we're going to add another blur, which is a fast blur. And then finally, we're going down to the color correction and we're going to add levels. Now these are all of the effects we're going to need for this. Now let me show you kind of how we're going to put this together. So first I want to do is take this CC radio blur. You'll see there's a center. And what I want to do is I want to pick whip or connect that center to the center position of the shape. So I'm going to hold down Option or Alt on the keyboard and click on that stopwatch and it brings up the center position. And then what I need to do is it brings up this expression and there's this pick whip for the center. I'm going to grab position. And so what that ensures is that it's the center is always going to be right where that dot is. Now I need to take this echo and I'm going to bring this echo time, the seconds, a lot further down. So I think I'm going to go 0 and it looks like it's not doing much right now, but then if I bring up the number of echoes, you can see there begins to be a trail. All right. Now next 
is this radial blur. And show, let me show you what this does, is when I bring up the amount, let's zoom into this, you can see it creates kind of a cone. This kind of this cone trail come going on. And that's how I created this long elongated kind of tail on this. And so to make all of this other stuff go away, that's where these levels comes in. So let's come into the levels. Let's change it to alpha. And then I need to just tweak my alpha settings. I'm going to crush it down to almost nothing. And then there's a little bit of red uh, edges on there, and that's what this fast blur is for. So let's just set that to like three. Let's just to smooth up the edges. And you might want to play around with layer order. So for this, it looks like fast blur up above CC radial blur is working pretty good. Now let's take a look at what we have so far. See how quick that was? Pretty cool. Now let's make some adjustments because it seems a little long right here. So what I can do uh, to kind of tweak this to make it look how you want is first I'm going to come into the CC radio blur and as I adjust that, that's going to shorten or lengthen the tail. Also the number of echoes will shorten or lengthen the tail. So what I also like about this is you can see little little trails kind of leaves behind little bits back here. Now if you don't like that, then what you can do is like this one right here is looking a little bit weird right there. Not exactly what I was going for. We can take the number of echoes down and then that's going to stop that. Also, if we increase the the radial blur. Now, with the radial blur, make sure it's set on scratch. Um, that's what it is by default, so I didn't mention that. But Okay. So you can tweak around with some of these settings to kind of get a different looking blobby. And now what's cool about this is, well, we can turn it into a preset, or we can just copy and paste these effects onto a new layer. So I'm going to copy all of these effects. Just Command or Control C. We'll copy them, and let's go ahead and hide that layer. Let's grab a brand new layer, so new shape layer, and let's change the position. All right, and then if I come in here, and I'm going to paste those effects right onto this layer, and it's doing it, but you can see it's a little bit slow, so let's speed that up. All right, so pretty darn cool. Really easy way of creating these liquid flying blobbies. And again, if you haven't seen EC Abrams' tutorial, go check it out. Um, lots of great tips on there, and he's uh, got a really great channel. So if you're not already a subscriber, I highly recommend go and subscribe to his channel as well. And thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you've got an effect that you've done using this technique, Feel free to post it down in the comments so we can all take a look at it. And thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.